Hi guys, my name is Andy, I'm from Nismotech.com. Today we're going to be checking out the BT11 AC dual band Wi-Fi extender 1200. Going to be showing you around the product, telling you how to go about setting it up with a, a bit of a guide and also putting it through some testing as well. So make sure you stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so just before we get started, there are links down below in the description to where you can go and find out pricing and availability if this product is something that is of interest to you. Obviously, it will be in the video description or on the website nismotech.com. So, we're going to take a look around the actual packaging, um, get the product out and have a, a quick tour of it, and then obviously we're going to go and set it up and, and get it up and running. So, up at the top, obviously, we've got the BT logo. Uh, one thing to note is that it works with all broadband providers. It's not necessarily designed just for BT. Um, you can use this on, on any Wi-Fi uh, connection to obviously extend the range. Uh, extend super fast Wi-Fi where your router can't reach. And down here it says next generation 11 AC dual band speed super fast technology and then they see dual band wi-fi extender 1200 it's actually the top of the range model from bt moving on to this side so we've got the 11 ac dual band wi-fi technology perfect for fiber broadband uh, we've got faster download online gaming multiple hd 3d uh, video streaming Great reliability, Ethernet port for wired devices, so you can go and connect uh, a wired device up to this, such as a console or a laptop, if you do wish to. Works straight out of the box, compatible with non-11 AC dual band routers and devices. Also, there's a phone number there for technical support and help. And then on this side, again, I'll see just covers over some of the features. So we do have a three year warranty, which is really good to see. Um, and I see so that you can securely a wireless network no configuration necessary so on to the back and also we've got a couple of uh, images of uh, possible scenarios uh, down here also it says that you've got the internet works with any broadband provider any wireless router obviously then it goes on to the extender 1200 that we have here and obviously it will extend the range of your wireless broadband where your router can't reach so that's about it really for the packaging uh, apart from serial numbers and barcodes, so we're just going to go and flip the lid and get this out for you guys so that we can actually have a look and see what we get on the inside. So, on the inside, you have got your dual band Wi Fi Extend 1200 user guide. I see this is very good for reading. Uh, you do need to give this a bit of read uh, just to obviously help you set it up. Everything's pretty simple. Um, looking at it, obviously you've got a couple of different steps to actually follow um, and obviously a little bit of information on the back so make sure you do give that a good read I'm personally going to give it a read just to make sure I'm doing this correctly and then we come on to the actual unit itself and then finally on the inside you do get quite a, a large, probably about a metre long ethernet cable which is obviously for first use but also then you can obviously reuse it when you come to uh, connecting it up with uh, your actual device there as well. Apart from that, nothing else left in the box. So we're just going to go and close this back up. Take a look at the actual product. So as you can see, we've got the UK plug on that side. We've got a little bit of information on here. Uh, so on the back, for those of you that need it and want to uh, sort of look a bit further into configuring your wireless network, you've got the Ethernet Mac, wireless MAC address, uh, the wireless network name, uh, the admin password, the phone number, etc. for uh, any help that you may need. So obviously that information is good to be found there. Got a bit of ventilation around the side, obviously this thing, even though there's no fan or anything inside, um, it is going to also get warm. Um, but not too warm. Quite a stylish looking front with a blue band, anodized band across the front. And you've got indicators here with too close, good range, and too far. And I say it's going to be quite important when it comes to the positioning of this particular device. So you don't want it too close to your router, it's not really going to make too much difference. And I'll see too far away. So hopefully, we're going to be able to find a plug socket that's within good range that we can actually test this. So you've got the BT logo in there as well. It says here the switch controls the Wi-Fi band used to connect the extender to your router. Position it in the default setup position until setup is complete. Set up once set up, refer to the user guide to find out if you may benefit from changing. 
So the default setup is 2.4 gigahertz. And so you've got the option of changing that to 5 gigahertz. The problem is with 5 gigahertz is the range is not as good as it is with 2.4. So bear that in mind, you're not going to get as far away from this particular device and this from the router. So majority of people, you'll probably find that you, you'll keep this on the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth. And then underneath the sticker here, just peel that off there. So we've got an on off switch, which is at the top of the actual unit, as you can see, which is good to see. So you are able to turn it off. I don't think this particular device takes up too much power. So it's not gonna sort of drain your electricity in any way, shape or form. Um, but obviously, you know, there's no point wasting electricity. It, it will, should only take a, a couple of minutes to actually come back on, uh, on to, to life. So switching this off won't be too much of a, a bad idea. So you've got your ethernet port there. Uh, you've got 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bandwidth and you've got your WFPS key for pairing. So that's the device. Like I said, it's quite, quite a slim line, quite a nice looking device. Um, so we're now going to go and set it up and see what we can get out of this particular unit. Okay, so there are essentially two setup modes for this particular device. You can either connect it using your WPS key, which um, obviously makes the connection a hell of a lot easier. You don't have to muck around uh, with the cable or anything like that nature. But if your router doesn't have that, or if you prefer to go through the uh, setup without the WPS using the cable to connect, obviously it tells you how to do that here in the instructions. And essentially all you need to do is press your WPS key on your router, and then obviously go and press it onto the actual Wi-Fi extender. So my router is actually just tucked away down here. So as you can hopefully see, uh, my WPS key is now on. So we're now gonna go and hopefully get this connected up. So I'm just gonna go and press the button on here a moment. Okay, so as it's flashing, it means that it's obviously communicating with the router and obviously getting all the, the relevant settings, etc. Um, and then also once it stops the uh, the flashing, it means that everything is connected and so we can have a look at the actual range. Okay, so as you can see, we now have got the device connected. Um, when it was scrolling like that with the actual lights, it's obviously determining where the actual router was compared to this particular device. And obviously just setting up and configuring everything uh, following the uh, press of the WPS key, which hopefully will light up again in a moment it may not do actually because it's just obviously being configured so um as you can see we're actually too close uh, which is not surprising seeing as the, the router is there so we're now going to go and basically reset this back to default i'm going to show you how to connect it up using the wired connection and then obviously we'll do some testing okay so next coming up is the wired connection without the wps so i've already got a an ethernet cable sort of running underneath my desk uh, for various different bits and pieces so that's connected into the back of my Wi-Fi router. Now I'm gonna go and plug this in here. Just bear with me a moment, a bit tricky doing this with one hand. Very tricky in fact. There we go, finally in place. We're gonna go and switch it on, like so. I'm just gonna turn the light out here so that we can uh, see the activity that goes on here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a couple of lights flashing on there. So it obviously means that it's ready for us to go in and configure this particular unit. Okay, so once you've got it all connected up, you need to go to a browser and type in 192.168.1.1. You're then coming on to the login page. Now, the admin password says here the default password could be found on the product label, on the back of your Wi-Fi extender, or printed on the back of the user guide, which obviously is very handy indeed. Now, one thing to mention is that it is case sensitive, so bear that in mind. Okay, so once you're actually logged in, you're greeted with this sort of uh, setup connection wizard. Now, obviously the first tab that you have is setup, which is what we're on here. And you click start to connect the Wi-Fi extender to your broadband uh, as an alternative to using the WPS key. Or if your router doesn't obviously support that. Once it shows the band that we're trying to connect to or submit the 2.4 gigahertz wireless band. Uh, we've got no security on at the moment. And I see it's saying that we are currently disconnected. Um, 
down at the bottom here you've got the uh, the wireless network so if you're running it on the on the 2.4 gigahertz then the SSID or the Wi-Fi name will be that and I'll see you got the security on there as well etc um, if you click on advanced you are able to go in and change the wireless network SSID name if you do wish to and obviously add in various different bits of security so you can also go and enter a password um, etc for you to, to also go and connect into that and then if you click on system also it's just going to show the connection status etc um, you can go in and look at the system information the MAC address set the admin password upgrade your firmware and obviously log out so we're going to go back to the setup and click start next you're provided with a list of various routers that are in your area i'll see the closest one to me is my router thankfully at 100 percent so we're going to go click next and then it's also going to ask you for your wi-fi key or your wireless pass key so i'm just going to go and enter that a moment and then i'm going to go click finish and you can see that it's starting to process and what this is doing is obviously setting up the wi-fi extender with the, the actual key that's required for it to work wirelessly. Um, and obviously letting the router know what's actually happening um, in terms of uh, the signal being um, extended, etc. And one thing that I've, I've sort of noticed, I have done this around about two or three times and I sat on this screen waiting for something else to actually happen. Um, but after reading the user guide, I discovered that nothing kind of after this does happen. and some people you might find that your browser page disconnects you might get an error um, but the way to sort of tell whether or not it's actually working is by looking at the actual wi-fi extender it should come up with the signal being too close once it's up too close grab a tablet or a phone or anything like nature and just go and see if you have got the the wireless networks available to you um, I'd leave it probably around a, a couple of minutes, but to be fair, I've, I've left it up to 10 minutes now for it to actually do what it needs to do. Um, so we're now going to go and do a little bit of testing. Okay, so for my first test, what I did, I decided to test my current setup without the BT Wi-Fi extender, just to see how far away from the property I could actually get. Now, so it's going through a couple of walls. So um, as I was wandering outside and getting further and further away from the property as you would expect, the, the actual quality of the Wi-Fi signal started to drop off. It took longer to load the website and also uh, eventually the uh, connection was so slow it wouldn't actually load at all or refresh the page. Okay, so it's now time to bring the 11AC dual band Wi-Fi extender 1200 onto the network and at the moment I'm just walking through my house um, and I found what I consider to be the best location for where I've got a socket and also for coverage in the house so I'm just going to go and switch it on now and essentially it's going to start to communicate with the router um, and I see set everything back up from when we, we set it up previously when I did this first time round uh, the range that I got was slap bang in the middle of good range but on this one, it was in between too close and good range. So it gives you a bit of an indication as to how far away you need to plug this particular device in so that you get the best coverage for your network. Okay, so now on to the second test. And as you can see, I'm starting to connect onto the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band from the Wi-Fi extender. I'm just going to go and load my website just to make sure that we have got a connection. And we're going to go and start heading off outside. And as I was heading off outside, I went basically to the location that I was last at with the range that I had from my own Wi-Fi and started to move backwards towards the main road. Um, obviously double checking that I've got internet access, making sure that my website loads, but also not just loads, but obviously loads in a, a quick enough time and as you can see with the footage going through clicking on various different categories on my website everything was loading extremely quickly as if i was right next to the router and i was massively impressed the further i got away from the property didn't seem to make any difference at all how far away i was from it the with the websites were still loading yes it's obviously just a website nothing really intensive um, but everything was loading so much more quicker than if I was using my own Wi-Fi connection. And you can see how far I got away from my particular house. 
to the point where I actually had to stop going any further because I came on to the main road. So the BT11AC dual band Wi-Fi extender 1200 really does do a fantastic job at extending your wireless network. Obviously, yes, I was outside and it wasn't particularly through uh, any real walls. There's only one wall that it went through and I'll see your connection and your mileage may vary depending on your personal setup at home. But for me, this has proved that this product does work extremely well. It's very easy to set up, very easy to configure. And the range that I personally got was absolutely fantastic. So it's a really, really good product to invest in if you're leading that extra boost in your Wi-Fi department. So we hope you like this review, setup guide, testing of uh, the 11AC dual band Wi-Fi extender 1200. Don't forget to go and check out the links down below to where you can go and purchase this particular product. It really does help to support uh, my channel. And we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thanks for watching our video and we do hope you enjoyed it. Please do leave a comment down below and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and also visit our website nismotech.com where you'll find all the products we've done videos for as well as our current giveaways and the latest tech news and press releases. We hope to see you again soon.